I just self-hosted Plex in a Docker container, and I'm about to teach you how you can do it too. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Havoc. Today, as part of our self-hosted simplified series, I'm gonna show you how you can install and self-host Plex on your home lab. We're gonna do this via Docker and using Portainer. If you are new to Docker and Portainer and don't have it installed, I have a video I'll link right here that shows you how you can easily get those both installed. Once you have those installed, go ahead and get on your server and open up Portainer. To get started, we're gonna use the Docker installation off of Docker Hub. So you can head over to Linux server slash Plex. I'll put a link in the description below and you can follow along how we're gonna do this. We'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here, maybe a little more midway, and you can see where it says Docker Compose right here. This is all the info that we are going to use. Let me go ahead and split screen this and we can get started. They do provide us a Docker Compose, but we're gonna do this manually so we can learn a little bit more about Docker and how to kind of manually set up our Docker containers. So you can see I'm in Portainer here on the right side of the screen. We're gonna go to dashboard and then we want to go to our containers. Ignore all my containers. I have a bunch of them that I'm testing and stuff. What we're gonna do is at the top right here, we're gonna press add container. And here is where the fun begins. We need to give it a name. I'm gonna call this one Plex. Docker, you can call it whatever you want. And then we're gonna scroll down and we have to do all these different variables and etc., which is all this stuff on the left side of the screen on the Docker Compose. The first thing we need to do is we need to set our network mode to host. So on the right side on our retainer, we wanna scroll down and go to network. And you can see where it says bridge, we're gonna change that to host. Next up, we need to do some environmental variables. We need to do the PUID and the PG ID. So we'll go to NV, environmental variables. At the bottom, we'll click add environmental variable. We need to do a few of these. So I'm just gonna click it like five times and we'll get to, to doing these. The first one we need to do is PUID. So we'll go ahead and copy it from the left side. And then on the right side in the name, we'll just paste it right in there. And do the same thing for the PG ID. TZ version and Plex claim. So go ahead and do all those. All right, now that we have those done, we need to actually enter in this information. So if you don't know what your user ID is, the first thing you need to do is SSH into your server um, via your favorite terminal software. So you can see here, I have SSH into my server and all you need to do is type ID enter. And this is gonna show you your info right there. I am logged in as root. I don't suggest you do this, but for this example, that's what we're going with. And we can see my IDs are zero. So this is your PU ID, this is the PG ID. So go and take those numbers and type them here on the right side in the values. Mine are zero. The next one, TZ, is your time zone. And there's a really good informational page on Wikipedia that you can get all of your time zone codes. So I'll put a link in the description below for that. Mine is going to be America, Los Angeles. So I'll go ahead and paste that in there. Next up is the version. So we need to go back here on Docker Hub. And if we scroll back up, a little bit, we'll see some versions right here, this whole section. You have these three options or, or four options. So Docker version is just let Docker handle it. Um, the latest, you can do the latest version that you are entitled to. And then public, this is if you have Plex Pass, this will automatically give you the most stable version if you're subscription to Plex Pass. And then you can do a specific version like typing in the version number of the software. So we're gonna go Docker, so I'll copy that. I'll paste it in for version. And then finally, let's go ahead and scroll back down so we can keep track of where we're at. Plex claim, the bottom one. And this is if you already have an existing Plex account and maybe an additional server. What Plex claim will do is it'll take this instance or this Plex server we're making and tie it to your account. So what you can do is go to plex.tv slash claim and it'll give you a code. So let me bring this up, I'll refresh it. These codes are only good for four minutes. So you can go ahead and just copy that code to your clipboard. And then what we'll do is you'll paste it in to the Plex claim box. And this is not required, um, but if you do have a Plex account and you want to tie this server to your account, you can do that there. So that's all we have for our environment variables. Next up, as we can see, we need to do some volumes or some storage. And 
we need to actually create those volumes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over to our terminal session and create those folders. So you can see they want these volumes, config TV movies. So I'm SSH'd into my server. I like to put all of my folders in storage in a specific folder on my server. So I always know where everything's at and I can back stuff up. So I'm gonna go into my applications folder. You can see I have a bunch of stuff there. I'm gonna make a Plex directory. So I'm gonna go MK der Plex. We'll see if it's made, it is. So we'll CD into Plex, let's clear that out. And now I'm gonna make the different folders. So we wanna do a config folder. We want to do a TV folder. We wanna do a movies folder. We wanna do uh, music. And then finally, I want to do an other folder. You can also do pictures because Plex can do pictures. And what we're doing here is that config folder is where the server is gonna put all the config files for Plex. The TV folder is where we're gonna put all of our videos for TV shows. And that's where Plex is gonna look for the TV shows. Same thing for movies, we'll put our movies in there. Our music, we'll put our music in there. The other folder is when Plex is unable to figure out what that specific file is. You'll put it in other and that's how everything works. And like I said, you can make a photos directory um, as well. So we are done there. Let's just make sure all of our folders are made. So we'll do LS. And you can see config, movies, music, other, and TV. Cool, so we're all done there on that side. But what I wanna do real quick is wherever you created your folders, go ahead and copy. So mine is slash application slash Plex. I copied that. And then what we're gonna do is if we go back to Portainer, we can see we now need to actually create the volumes in Portainer or in our Docker container. So over here, we'll go to volumes and we'll scroll down and we need to do five. So we'll do, I'll click add additional volume five times. So first up, these are all gonna be binds. So we'll click bind on all of the options here or all of our volumes. And then the host is the actual physical computer where we just made those folders. We're gonna paste in that path. So mine is slash applications slash Plex. And the container side, we know up here, it needs slash config. So we'll do slash config. And then at the end of Plex, we'll do slash config. And this is saying Plex, hey, put all of your config files in this config folder. And the same thing here, we're gonna go slash, we'll do movies first and then slash TV, slash TV, slash music, slash music. And then finally slash other and slash other. Cool. Now we have our volumes created. So our server will know where to put all the files. Docker is able to figure all that out. The next step is we need to set our restart policy. So we go over here on the right side in Portainer, go to restart policy. And at the bottom, it says, unless stop. You can change it to however you want for that specific container to start up. We'll just follow along here. The final thing we need to do is tell Docker where to pull this image from. So we'll scroll up to the top here. And this one's actually super easy. You can see this whole thing right here, we're gonna copy that. And then in Portainer, scroll up to where it says docker.io. We're gonna paste that in there. And then we're gonna go latest and we are done. Now the magic is hit the blue button, deploy container. It's gonna go through, deploy the container. It might take a little bit for you. Mine was super quick there. And now in Portainer, we can see we have Plex Docker. How do we access that? Back here in the Docker Hub file, we can go back to the very bottom here, towards the very bottom, maybe three quarters away. And this port right here is how we access the site. So we're gonna go to the IP address of our server and then colon 32400. So go ahead and open up a new browser tab and go to that address and I'll see you there. Something to note real quick is when you go to your server, if you get this error, what this means is your claim code for your Plex claim expired. And cause it's only good for four minutes. 
So go back to the Plex claim. So plex.tv slash claim, get a new code and put that into your Docker container, start it up and you should be good to go. Now we have our very own Docker container running Plex self-hosted. Let's go through the setup real quick. So we'll go got it. Here is where we're gonna set up information about the server. So we're gonna call this server Plex Docker, just so I can keep track. You can check the box. Do you wanna be able to access outside the home? I do not. Now is where we add the media. So we'll add library. We'll go movies. You can change the name if you want. Next, browse for the folder. And then this is where we're gonna choose those folders that we map those volumes. So on the left side here, we have movies. We'll click add, add library. We'll do it again real quick. TV shows, browse for folder, TV. We'll do the same thing for music. Music, and then one last one for other. Like I said, we didn't do pictures. There's other. And now we have our four folders mapped. We'll click next. We're set up as complete. We'll click done. And here we are. We are logged into our very own Plex server. We're ready to go. If you want to copy movies to your server, you'll need to create SMB shares to each of those folders. And then Plex will start kind of looking at those folders and add it in here. You can access this from any device. You can do it over the web. There's apps you can do on mobile, Amazon, Fire Stick, et cetera, Roku. Plex is a really great product. This is what we use at my house. And then we use at my in-laws house as well. It's super easy for everybody to figure out and kind of navigate the process. And there you have it. That is how you install Plex in a Docker container on your home lab. I hope this helped you out. Let me know down in the comments if you did this, what kind of setup did you do? Did you do a Docker container? Did you do it like in Casa OS? Maybe you did it on your NAS. I'm curious to see what kind of hardware you set this up on. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. You can also join my Discord server at discord.gg slash havoc. We have a section for home labbing where you can kind of get in there and chit chat with us. We can help you out if you have questions or just kind of talk about home lab stuff. And before I go, at the end of all my videos, I say stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good. Keep doing good is a very important part of this channel. I do a lot of charity work, and currently we're doing some fundraising for charity. So if you head over to havoc.2 slash charity, you can help donate to the cause that we are fundraising for right now. All the money goes directly to the charity. Nothing comes through my account or anything like that. Everything is on the up and up. I've worked in the charity industry for over 10 years, and charity is very important to me. And like I said, this channel. Really appreciate your support. And until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good.